So as Senator Lyons is saying, this is a bill that hasn't yet been introduced. It's still in the draft form. Um, but what the bill would do would, um, would be create, it's kind of twofold. First, it's asking for a collection of information. It's asking that the agency of administration collects information about how every department that played a role in responding to COVID, lessons learned, gaps in services, what went well, what didn't go well, and to deliver all that information to the agency of the administration. And then the second part is to have a task force evaluate Vermont's response to the pandemic and to use all of the information collected from the departments to create a strategic plan for addressing any future healthcare emergencies that are occurring on a statewide basis. So to look more specifically at the language, this subdivision A1, this is the, the data collection piece. So we're asking that by January 1st of next year, that the secretary of the administration consolidates all this data collected by each department and agency involved in Vermont's response to the pandemic uh, regarding the respective department's role in responding. And then there, there's a list of specific um, information that the departments and agencies shall provide to the Secretary of Administration. So the items on the list include policy modifications implemented in response to COVID, um, including the effectiveness and limitation of each modification identification of any populations, regions, or infrastructures that would have benefited from a more timely or robust state interventions, or both. And subdivision C, alternative responses and policies that would have better served Vermonters, opportunities to prevent, mitigate, and better respond to future health emergencies, and then a catch-all in subdivision E, any other relevant information necessary to ensure that Vermont's experience during the pandemic informs future statewide health emergency responses. And then in subdivision two, starting on line eight, um, this says that by um, September one of this year, the responsive departments and agencies are to submit the required um, information to the Secretary of Administration. So just to give you a sense of this timeline, on September 1 of this year, agencies and departments are submitting their information to the Secretary of Administration. And then four months later on January 1st, the Agency of Administration has um, consolidated all of this information into one package. Also on September 1st, so the same day that the agencies and departments are submitting all this information to the Secretary of Administration. The Secretary on that date is also convening the task force for the purpose of evaluating Vermont's response to the pandemic and developing a strategic plan for addressing future um, health emergencies. In subsection C, we have a list of members. The Secretary of the Administration is to serve as chair. Other members include the Secretary of Human Services or designee, Commissioner of Health or designee, Commissioner for Children and Families or designee, the Commissioner of Dale or designee, Commissioner of Diva or designee, Commissioner of Corrections or designee, Commissioner of Mental Health or designee, Commissioner of DPS or the designee, Secretary of Education or the designee, Commissioner of Labor or the designee, Secretary of Commerce and Community Development. I'm noticing here it doesn't say or designee, so that might be something we wanna add. The Secretary of State or designee. And in subdivision 14, any other persons the Secretary of Administration believes would be helpful. So flexibility for the Secretary to add other um, individuals to be members of this task force. In subsection D, we have the responsibilities of the task force. The task force is to review the data submitted by the departments and agencies to create the strategic plan for addressing future emergencies. And by February 15th of 2022, the task force is to submit a proposed strategic plan to the General Assembly. And the plan is to highlight any legislative changes necessary to implement the final strategic plan. And the proposed plan is to address ongoing state and local hazard mitigation planning efforts. And then in subdivision two on line 18, by July 1 of 2022, 
after soliciting input from relevant subject matter committees of the General Assembly, the task force is to adopt a strategic final plan for public health emergencies. So what you'll notice here is um, the General Assembly doesn't have to act or have to approve the plan. What this language says is um, that the task force just has to submit their proposed plan on February 1st and so solicit comments from the um, relevant committees with subject matter um, jurisdiction. And then once that information has been gathered, um, the task force is to uh, propose or to finalize their plan on July 1 of 2022. And um, some administrative issues, the task force has the administrative, technical and legal support of the agency of the administration. And the task force is to convene not less than four times to carry out its charge. And um, majority constitutes a quorum. And that's it, the act takes effect July 1 of this coming year. Okay, and that's to, uh, thank you, Katie. Um, going through it, I see all kinds of things. Um, just, just as a reminder, uh, this, uh, Senator Cummings will remember, this was a bill that the committee last year started to draft in, in the I don't know when it was, was it April or May, probably May, we decided that all this work is going on. And when you look at the uh, hazard mitigation plan for the state, the, there wasn't a significant amount regarding healthcare or pandemics. So that's kind of the, the, the motivation for putting a bill like this together. Then we had um, Suzanne Young from the governor's office come in and she was not negative about this. It was just bad timing. And you can well imagine trying to do this. And I'm even thinking the dates that we have in that bill are somewhat aggressive. So let's put those dates aside for a minute. Um, and then also Mike Sherling, who also was extremely overwhelmed during that time. And I think he still is particularly with the next um, issues that he's dealing with. So this isn't meant, this, the timing of this is not something that I think, let's not get too bogged down with when and how that, how, when, the, when the dates, what the dates are. But the concept I think is something that we felt was important to consider. I still feel it's important to consider. And then after reading some um, articles sent out from various folks, about the lack of preparation that we had as a country and as individual states that really reinforces, I think, a need for some type of strategic healthcare planning up front for an, the next health uh, emergency. So that, that's, that's the history and I, I bring it to you. It's something that um, we can work on as a committee uh, and build a, as, a, as a committee bill that we talked about last time. If you're still interested in doing that, we'll, we'll move forward with it as a committee bill. Uh, otherwise we can you know, collect signatures and introduce it. There's no guarantee that if we introduce it, it'll land in our committee. Um, so I'm I thinking let's take first crack at the healthcare piece and then we can see what happens. So uh, open for discussion. Go ahead, Senator Hardy, then Senator Cummings. Thank you, Senator Lyons. Um, I didn't this committee or the last year's version of this committee also work on two other, maybe one other, two other pl planning um, bills, this isn't actually the one that I remember you working on, and maybe this was because it was this one was toward the end. Well, we we never this was never a public uh, It was just within the committee and I doubt very much whether folks knew about it. I think okay. the one you're thinking about is a bill that we do have in committee, which is the climate change uh, health care. Right. Thing. OK. OK. So that was yeah, that, I remember it being broader. Different. And that we did pass that as a full Senate, right? And it went over to the House. That was it went record. to the House and then it ended up in pandemic. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, I get I guess um, in specific to the this bill, I 
I'm wondering if uh, this one seems much narrower, just focused on on the pandemic, which may be appropriate. Um, I agree that the timeline is too tight, but I, I guess I would also like to hear, and this we would do, of course, if we did the bill, get some testimony about what's already in place, because I'm not as aware of what's already in place in terms of our planning, because uh, we, as a country, did a really terrible job of responding to the pandemic, but as a state, we've done pretty well, and sort of what what worked and what what might we need to improve? Um, I, I guess I would like to get testimony on that if we're moving forward. But, but so you're absolutely right. And that's the whole point, I think, that we did a good job. And so let's, uh, let's institutionalize that. Let's put something in place that says for the next pandemic 40 years down the road that we have something we can uh, rely on. So um, Senator Cummings. I, I mean yeah, my first thing was the timing. We're not out of this yet. Uh, and we don't know when or if, I mean, if the vaccine only works for six months, we could be back here next year. Um, but again, just listening, you know, sitting back and listening, to me, it's very prescriptive. It tells the administration what they shall do and who shall be on it and when they shall report. As a Senate, we set up a committee to say, okay, what did we learn? You know, lessons learned. And I think I'd rather work more cooperatively I mean, if history is repeated, it's going to be a hundred years before we get hit, you know, or at least 50. I know there's now talk about travel and these things are going to go through every three months, but um, the changes in medicine, I mean, this is a very new kind of vaccine um, that you know, it's not the old, just dead polio virus we're putting in here. Um, I, I think I'd rather start with just more of an informal, you know, report back to us on what the people that were doing this found was lacking. You know, I mean, I keep sitting here and saying, yep, you're required by, you know, uh, executive order to wear a mask in Vermont. But the governor can't put a, you know, a 50 or a 200 or a $500 fine on that. He can't send you. So there's basically no penalty if you just say, tough, I'm not doing it. There is no I guess you know, I, and that that to me is one of the things that is lacking. We have no penalty if you drive up here coughing and sneezing and you know check into an inn and go out and go skiing and don't wear a mask. We can do public shaming, we can say, you know, you need to go home, but there is no there is no legal penalty for violating the public health order. And well, is I, that- I, I, is I that hear you. I think that's, that is, that would be an issue uh, for us. I think that certainly is. Um, uh, the, the question we have, and I think the comment that Ruth made about what do we already have in place is an important one because we do have a hazard mitigation plan and we do have, um, the head of that uh, emergency director, Borneman, and uh, we would, if for a testimony, we'll certainly have to hear from all uh, different folks on what the current plan is. And the administration, I do know, has been calling and collecting information to, um, to work on some of this. And I, I would feel better if we just got a report rather than telling them they shall set up a commission. 
Oh, and so, these shall be the people on the commission. So, Anne, this is it's Senator Cummings. I, I couldn't agree with you more. This remember this. The, where did this come from? This came from some urgent uh, sense, a sense of urgency in the middle of May, and uh, so I'm I'm throwing it out on the table for us. It's not something that I have yeah. strong feelings about. The only thing I do think we should do is have something that is public health centric uh, statewide planning. I think we should, but I think yeah. I feel better if it were a little more low key. Well, let's let we can work on that. That's uh, an excellent suggestion. Maybe it's because I'm Irish, but when someone tells me <laughs> I shall do something. Oh dear, that sounds like our family. My first response is make me. <laughs> Go ahead, Ruth. Let's, yeah, let's, let's I mean, stay I, in, let's stay in discussion mode. So just, you know, I think it's a good idea. I, I mean, I think we don't want to lose the lessons that we've learned and the ability to improve our response in 10 years or 20 years or two years or two months, you know, so I think it's really important that we seize this moment and learn from this moment and have the people who did the work document what was done well and what wasn't done well. I think that's super important and we don't wanna do it too far in advance because they'll forget. Um, but we also don't wanna overwhelm people during when they're actually working to do the, you know, right. respond to the pandemic. So certainly there are timeline things. I, I guess it, to Anne's point about, you know, what level of, of uh, sort of urgency or authority or how low key do we wanna be? I, I don't know yet until we hear from them how low key I want to be. <laughs> you know, if we hear from them, oh my God, we were not prepared and we just got lucky because we kicked butt, then <laughs> then that's then we know we need to do more. But if they were like, well, the reason we responded well is because we have this in place and this in place and this in place and we have it all, you know, then then we know we want to be more low key. So I guess I'm not even sure yet what level of of low keyness. I don't know why I keep using that word, except for Anne used it, so it seemed like to go with it. You know, what, how low key should we be? So maybe it's we need to hear from Erica and or Director Bornemann and um, Commissioner Sherling and others um, first. Yes, but not right away. Yeah, yeah, and and we have other issues we can work on also. So, um, but. I think it's important to move forward with something because we don't, it's all about the lessons learned. We talked about that a lot last session. Um, we had a whole like subcommittee in the Senate about lessons learned and um, we can pull that out and look at it too, but, but also not overwhelming them during their direct response to the pandemic. So, okay, I, um, I'm hearing both of you, uh, Josh or uh, Senator Terenzini, Senator Hooker, I can see the wheels are turning. Uh, yeah. Senator Lyons, just taking it all in right now. I mean, good, oh, good, good. Dis good discussion. Um, you know, I could see it both ways. Um, it's information that we need to retain and, and learn from, learn from, from this and do better. You know, we've done a good job as a state, but we, we can always do better and it, it needs to be archived somewhere that we can, pick it up and say, all right, this is what we did great. Let's do it again. Hopefully we never have to do it again, but. That, that would be a good bill. Please archive everything you've done well so we can pick it up again, period. <laughs> I, I could go for that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll co-sponsor that. Okay, <laughs> that may be what comes out. I don't know. That's easy to read, but um, Ruth, uh, Senator Hardy mentioned the uh, lessons learned subcommittee from the Senate. And I know that there's a list that uh, Senator Brock has. And um, certainly we've learned a lot. And I think that a bill like this would um, guarantee that we know, we, we hear or see what we've learned. And also I would hope that there would be recommendations that we could implement within the, uh, the plan. But I think, you know, Vermont has been a leader, has been a role model, and we have to take some um, comfort in that. So I, I guess, you know, some of the stuff that, some stuff was already there. So yes, we need to hear from 
the uh, players. Right. So I know that um, I was asked by the lesson learn group to give some information and I wrote seven or eight pages worth. And so, but there's nothing in this bill that, and I'm happy to share that with everybody. It's probably gone by the by by now. We understand everything, but the, um, what I, what I'm hearing you say is, uh, I, I'm also hearing you say that this is an administrative thing, but it's also dependent on us as legislators to be able to look through and see what response we gave. Now, the question I have then, uh, do we want to add something in wherever it is and however it is, loose, tight, prescriptive, non-prescriptive, regarding a legislative response. So, uh, I mean, clearly we responded and we went into remote and we had rules uh, and we've continued to, to work uh, collaboratively with the administration and others. Do we wanna have a section in there? And it, would, it seems to me that whatever we do, it's gonna, it's gonna travel to another or other committees which is one good reason why we can maybe get our fingerprints on it early on. But it seems to me that whatever the legislative response is would go through gov ops or some, or even rules. Um, and uh, so just some thoughts there. Senator, so Lawrence. Uh, Senator Hooker, then Senator Hardy. Um, it did, as we were looking at the bill, it did strike me that there wasn't anything there about the legislature. And um, I think that you have a valid point there because we did do a lot and we have the authority to do stuff. So I think that, you know, that has to be uh, indicated in anything that we put out. Whatever we do, we don't want to violate the constitution or the state laws. I guess I would say that, um, <laughs> There, there are two tracks we could take with it after we hear from people. So um, is we could keep it very, very focused on the sort of health response um, or health and human services response, or we could broaden it out and be more uh, like the, the state response. And that would include the legislature um, and local governments and all that. Um, and uh, I, I think can you explain? Yeah, can you wait, Ruth? Ruth, can you explain about. what you just said a little bit better? I don't understand what you mean by focused on health and human services, but not state or local government. So uh, the way the way it's written right now, it's focused. I'm I'm just looking on it on my other screen. It's focused on a health emergency. Yeah. and um, the health response to that emergency. Mm -hmm. um, there are other, there were other side effects to this emergency that came about because of the health emergency, like the economic emergency, the financial emergency, the employment emergency, all these other things that came out of it. And I, I'm just thinking about scope right now, whether we wanna focus on the health emergency specifically or do we want to have it broader? In which case, you know, there are other committees may want to weigh in. I mean, just thinking about my committees from last year, because they're still in my head all the time, you know, the sort of how did agriculture respond and the food, you know, food is situation and how did we deal with farm workers and all of that and the, all the, you know, the, the sort of agriculture economy and agriculture. And you have on the bill right now, the secretary of education is in there. So, you know, do we want to talk about local schools and how local, you know, or do we want to keep it very tightly focused on the health emergency? And I think that's different. You know, like I said before, we are trying to figure out what scope we want. And I don't know yet until we hear from other people about sort of the scope that we want to tackle. And if, if we are going to go broad, which I think there's certainly arguments for, for wanting to do that, then we would want to get input from other committees. If we're keeping it very focused on the health response mm -hmm. and health planning, then that, that's definitely within this committee only if, if, or, or primarily. So you have raised the very issue that I think is important. Um, 
and I asked the chairs of the other committees if they would be interesting, interested in sponsoring the bill so it would travel committee to committee. I do see this as an opportunity for a statewide response to the COVID pandemic. And that does include food insecurity, which is partly our bailiwick, but also uh, economic development and also uh, agriculture so and transportation. So I'm not sure you can segregate out, unless you're thinking only about uh, putting in place um, the rules that have come to us, so the guidelines from CDC and Department of Health. I'm not sure we can segregate out the public health emergency from other aspects of life. You know, once you quarantine or you say stay home, stay safe, that raises significant other issues. And that's, that's so getting at kind of the statewide thinking, administration wide thinking, um, that was the goal. So uh, we can, we can certainly, as we're listening to testimony, we'll, we'll certainly consider what's the best way to go. I'm fine with that. Senator Hooker, were you, did you have a comment? I, I, I just think that we're ultimately, we're going to want a report on the whole of our response to the pandemic. And that will inform whatever needs to be done for our management in the future. So to, uh, I think um, as a committee, our focus obviously should be health and hopefully other committees will join on and have their focus come together as a, a complete and plan in the end. So yeah, I, I have no desire to go in and uh, uh, look at all the activities that ACCD has done. Oh, and, no, yeah. no, no, don't even go there. But I do have a desire to know that there, there are policies that they've put in place or things that they've done that they feel are critical in response to a health uh, related emergency. And it might extend to other emergencies as well, which yeah. takes us right social, back to- Social distancing yeah. I mean, just in, in public places and yeah. you know that type of thing. So yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, but when you close lodging places, when you close restaurants, when you open them up again, uh, they're all public health guidelines, mm -hmm. you know, but they all have implications for our economy. And then how, how the, how the um, economic organizations, how the restaurants and how others responded and how they, what, what they did, what was their, what was the work that really allowed for them to survive or not? Uh, so there are a lot of issues there that we aren't going to get into. And as Senator Cummings stated, the obvious, we're in the middle of this pandemic. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know what the rest of the effects are going to be. So I would just caution us to um, not get too uh, consumed with this when there are other of uh, so many other things that we need to look at. So, so my, so this is uh, thank you. And, and Ruth also brought that up. And I think that's a really good idea. I, th the, the goal with this thing is I think to put it, uh, bring it in, put it on the table, think about it as a committee bill, uh, take testimony from when we have opportunities to take testimony and when people are feeling a little bit less stressed, especially those who are uh, boots on the ground, the administration in particular, and uh, gather information. We can look for outside resources and folks to come in who might be able to, uh, I, I'm thinking of some, some researchers or, who, or others who have thought about this issue. And, um, and then gradually through the session, and by the session, I mean this year, and possibly next, uh, get to a place where we feel comfortable. And in the meantime, um, I'm not going to feel shy about talking with other chairs about working similarly. So, I, I, but I, I think we have we have a vehicle that will serve us and serve the state well. If we get to a point, look at if we start feeling really good about uh, where we are. We won't, but if 
imagine that we were in March or April. I mean, we could work uh, more wholly on, on this. So um, that's good. Any other comments? So could somebody summarize what they think I just said? Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> that, um, uh, that it's good that we have this on the table and that we will um, keep it in the sort of middle of our minds, maybe not the back and not the front, but the middle of our minds throughout the next couple months as we get testimony from various people and that we will um, work on other things, but keep this um, in the hopper and that as the pandemic hopefully moves forward, positively, we could get back to it, um, hopefully this session so that we don't lose um, the, the, the momentum of wanting to um, learn the lessons we need to learn. Um, and uh, I, I will just add that I think it makes all kinds of sense to have our committee take the lead on this, not another committee because we're the health committee. So well, I think everybody thinks they're the health committee these days. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we are. Oh. And, um, so I think this is an important bill for us to start with and sort of come back to every once in a while. So that's what I think I heard you say. Yep. That's good. I think that, that, that says it pretty well. We don't have a middle burner on our stove, but maybe you guys do. <laughs> okay. We need one. <laughs> Okay, uh, so no, but I think you misread what I said. I think we're going to take it up and pass it out by February 2nd. So no, no. that's a joke. Bad joke. Um, anything else? Katie, do you, did you understand what we just said? Are you still there? <laughs> I'm here. Yes, I'm listening. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> do you have any comments that you'd like to uh, add on uh, anything structural in the bill that you, you know, you've heard less prescriptive, more prescriptive, or not really more prescriptive, but less prescriptive. And um, it sounds like it's policy decisions for the committee yeah. at this point. So um, I'll just stay tuned until I have a little bit more guidance to draft Let, something for you. I had a thought uh, earlier, uh, and as, as I was working on this bill, thinking about it, uh, certainly the, the structure of the bill at this point is anything but complete. I think it's a really good start and I really appreciate the work that you've done on this, to tell you the honest truth. Um, but I, I was thinking that it might be helpful to reach out to CSG uh, and or NCSL and to see if they have um, researchers or work that is going on about this. Now, and I do understand that other parts of the country and other parts of New England aren't feeling as successful as we are in uh, mitigating COVID. But I, it would be helpful if, Katie, do you mind just making an inquiry? Uh, and I, I keep my eyes open for this uh, a lot and I have read a couple of articles, uh, one from Stanford in California, but I'm wondering if there's something thoughtful going on uh, in those two organizations, that would be helpful. I'll reach out to them. Yeah, that'd be so great. Something came out from the Federal Reserve Bank. Huh. Which I've, I, I, and I think it was related. It was a COVID report. So I will uh, pull yeah, that up. Yeah, dig that out. I'll look for that Stanford report I got. Um, I read it and I said, oh yeah, so now somebody actually agrees with me that we should have had a statewide plan. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's not, it wasn't any, it wasn't any big in-depth analysis. So, Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, for, for Senator Terenzini, um, the NCSL, you may already know this, but the NCSL is the National Conference of State Legislators and um, CSG is the Council of State Governments. Um, a lot of these, uh, uh, alphabet soup is hard to keep track of when you're new, believe me, I remember. Um, and uh, I think that uh, what, one of the things that is important, for, uh, an important reason for us to do this also is because um, 
the other states can learn from what Vermont did. The NCSL may say, no, we don't have anything yet, but Vermont, please do it so that we can share it with other states. Um, so yes. that's important. And it's also important to remember that we are not through this pandemic by any stretch of the imagination. And we had 172 cases and four deaths yesterday. So um, we can pat ourselves on the back a lot, but we also need to remember that people are still getting really sick and dying in our state. And we have to stay focused on that. Thank you.